Hello everyone. I've uh, got a couple of uh, requests uh, quite recently uh, from some subscribers who've said, you know, even though you've told us that uh, grading books is an individual choice and everybody does it differently, we would like to see how you grade a book or the things that I look for when I grade a book. So I thought, you know what, I'll go ahead and do one. <clears throat> uh, first things first, again, it's my personal opinion. This is how I do it. Doesn't mean it's right, doesn't mean it's wrong. This is what's worked for me. Uh, this goes from speaking over the years with people who I really respect, uh, their grading abilities, and the things that they look for. And like I do in a lot of things, I incorporate what I think is the best of the best and put it to my personal use. Because, uh, like I said before, I am planning on opening either a shop or an online uh, comic store. And I want people to know that, hey, when I sell them a book... If I say it's a it's a seven, that's going to be a solid seven. Uh, I don't want any complaints. Uh, so you know, customer service is everything. So, uh, with that said, the most important thing any grader can have when grading a book is the ability to show integrity with oneself. And all that means is be able to look at your collection and be honest with what you see. Okay, if a book is a four, graded a four. Don't sit there and say, well, I can probably give it a five, five and a half because I want it to be better. There is nothing worse than looking at a book that is just beat to hell. And have a person say, well, you know, the book is 30 years old and for 30 years old it looks pretty good. It, it, that doesn't work. Okay, that doesn't work. So um, I will go over quickly uh, some of the things uh, that I believe and I hope you find it you know, helpful for you uh, in your grading endeavors. Uh, the book I am doing right now is Iron Man number 60 uh, from July of 1973. Uh, so, first things first, uh, like they always say, will let area and clean. That, that's common sense. You can't grade a book if you don't have a will let, a will, a well lit area. Let me get that out. It's been a long day, excuse me. Uh, so, have a well lit area and we'll get started. First thing I look for is cover reflectability. Uh, what that means is, does this book reflect color? Now, I'm holding it over the lights over my roof and it looks pretty good. I'll also pop a flashlight and I'll see, does it, look, does it reflect? And this book does reflect. Now, don't anybody tell you, you can use a flashlight to look at the covers of your books to find the defects and the things that you have to find. And people, oh, don't ever use a flashlight because it's going to hurt your book. It's not going to hurt the book. It's a flashlight for Pete's sake. You're on it for two seconds. You know, if you sit there for an hour with it on the book, you know, okay, fine. I'm looking at something real quick. It isn't going to kill the book. So use a flashlight so you can really see the book in good detail up close with a good light source close to the book. So that's what I like to do. Some people say that's wrong. I don't think it's wrong. My books are in fantastic shape. I'll put my collection up against anybody. Next thing I look for, staples. Are the staples firm on the book? They look firm. Are they discolored? Different companies use different types of staples. So you look for the staples on the outside. Is it firm? Does there lots of tears or rips? The next thing I will do is I will go to the centerfold, which I have here, and I will see if the staples are all the way through. Because contrary to popular belief and what I've heard some people say, look, in my opinion, if a page is separated from a staple, whether it be the cover or an inside page starting at the centerfold and the, you know, the bottom part of the, the page is removed from the staple, that automatically in my book, in my collection, makes it a 4.0. I will not buy books like that. Uh, <clears throat> looking at this book, we have, quickly what I see, we have minor foxing. Now, Using the Overstreet grading guide, which everybody should have, minor foxing is allowed all the way up to like an 8.0. They allow minor foxing on a book. All foxing is is discoloring of the newspaper from the oils and stuff in the paper. Newspaper does that over time. You have to remember, comic books were not made to last forever. It's cheap paper, cheap ink thrown together, meant to be put in some kid's back pocket as he ran, you know, ran around, you know, the neighborhood, 
you know, something to read. It wasn't meant to be at the level it is right now, which has gotten really big. That's why the very first Comic-Con in 1970 in San Diego had a whopping 322 people go through the door in three days. A lot of people might not know that, but it was 320-something people went through uh, the first Comic-Con. It's a lot different than it is now with a half a million people who fight for toys. The um, Getting back to the books, that was just kind of a little, you know, thing. So I'm looking at the staining. Now, a lot of things that some people don't do, to me, the front cover is important. The back cover is just as important. Now, nine times out of ten, if you have foxing on the back front cover, you're going to have it on the back cover. And here we have some foxing. Uh, do not make a mistake of understanding that staining and foxing are two separate things. Foxing is a natural progression of the paper, where it just kind of it looks like a, it looks like freckles almost, brown specks on the on the book. To staining, staining is when I'm drinking an apple juice and I spilled it on the book. That's a stain. Foxing is natural. That's why foxing is allowed up to an 8.0. And if I'm not mistaken, staining is not allowed on a book 8.0. I'll just look real quick. So you bear with me here for a second. Um, minor foxing. Let's see. Do, do, do. No... Staining is allowed. No staining. So, there's a difference right there. Foxing, staining, two separate things. So that's what I look for. Um, are the corners sharp and tight? Nine times out of ten, they're not going to be sharp and tight on older books. Uh, blunting, though, is allowed on grades all the way up to like seven and a half. You can have blunted corners. Even eights have blunted corners. They will allow that. Uh, slight stress marks on the spine are allowed. I don't mind things like that. You know, that's what I look for. I will also go through every page of the book to make sure, A, the book is complete. There are no tears on pages inside because a tear inside a page is, you know, is going to drop that grade down. Even though people say, you know, I, I've actually had dealers say, well, it's an inside page, so it doesn't count. It does count. The book is ripped. It's ripped. Whether it's the outside cover or the inside page, it's ripped. That's why... You should also look through your books and make sure none of the coupons are clipped out of your book. Um, a lot of these books, uh, these, I remember these as a kid. You can see them here. They have these little coupons like, you know, giant lifelike karate practice dummy for 99 cents. You had to cut that coupon and send it out. A lot of these places, a lot of kids did that. I remember doing that, sending for things uh, because, you know, 99 cents and get a, you know, a little submarine or whatever I thought was pretty neat as a kid. So... You do that, uh, so you have to make sure that your book is complete, and that includes the coupons inside. Cannot be cut. If the coupons are cut, it's like a tear. Okay, it's a, it's a missing book. It's considered an incomplete book. Again, don't let anybody tell you differently. Uh, you know these are things that Overstreet goes through. Uh, I go by what Overstreet says and what I've learned over the years. <clears throat> you know, if you have a clean cover. Your staples are good, your center fold is secure, and it's not beaten up and, and thrown in the dirt. That's a good book. One thing I don't like is a date stamp. You will not find any of my books with date stamps on it. I won't buy a book with a date stamp, no matter how good the book looks, because Overstreet says date stamps are allowed. To me, I don't know why. To me, you've stamped, you've marked the book. To me, that's a defect. You threw ink on it. It's like writing on the book. It's just, what's the difference between someone who used a stamp or someone who wrote it neatly on there? They'll allow that. You'll see books on eBay that have writing up in the corners, uh, usually date marks. It comes from, uh, what it comes from is newsstands. They would get the books in. They'd mark the dates on it. And, you know, when they went on sale for their personal records. And that's, a, that's allowed and accepted. But a subscription crease is not. Now, to me, if you're going to allow a date stamp because they said, well, that was just the way it was back then. Well, you know what? A subscription crease is the same thing. That's the way it was back then. They folded the book, they put it in an envelope, sent it to the kids at home, because most books were purchased through subscription, not through comic book stores, because there weren't a lot of comic book stores in the you know, 50s, 60s, and 70s, practically none, actually. So I never understood that. So me personally, I don't allow subscription. I don't like um, 
date stamps on there. I don't even like subscription creases. Uh, either or to me is considered a defect and I'll stay away from the book. Um, so, real quick again, I mean, I know I'm kind of babbling on and stuff, but this was something that, you know, I usually don't talk a lot about things like this, but, you know, I've been getting good responses from my videos and, and people have been really cool about the stuff that I'm doing. So, you know, I thought I would do something for them. Um, <clears throat> so, real simple, um, staples, does the cover reflect light nicely, nice and glossy, nice and clean. I can't really show you on that. <clears throat> Last thing, well, one thing I did forget. This is the Overstreet Owl card. I don't know if anybody has this or not. What this does is it allows you to look at the color of the paper. Because they'll tell you in the Overstreet, in the grading guide, a certain color. What you do is you just kind of put the card on there and it kind of gives you the color bar, you know, the colors of the paper. Because newsprint, you know, just colors over time. So using this guide, it's certainly not tan and it's a lower off-white. So on the owl card, it would probably be a seven or eight on the low end. So uh, you look at that, when you look at these books here, I'm going to say this is probably a seven. So let's look at the seven real quick with the things that I said. So uh, I already said the staples were fine and it said some discoloring was allowed. There's no discoloring there, so it hits that area there. There is no spine roll. Spine roll or curves up a little bit. There's no spine roll on this book, so it's hit that already. There is no staining, and it allows for minor foxing. If I have some foxing in a couple little areas, to me that's minor foxing. It hits that area. There is no date stamps on this book, although it does say it's allowed. Uh, there's no spine splits, but there are some stress lines, but a small accumulation of stress lines are, are allowed. Corners are allowed to be blunted. These are blunted, not severely blunted, but they are blunted, but that is allowed. There are no interior tears. There is no acid odor. The paper quality for a 7 is allowed to be cream and tan, not brown. <clears throat> We've already stated that looking at my owl card, this is an off-white, borderline tan. So I'm well within that area there. Um, and then what else we have here? Cover wear, it does show. You're allowed some interior yellowing. Yellowing is allowed because the paper does that naturally over time. So I can sit here and look at this and I've hit all the areas. <clears throat> so I can feel very comfortable giving this a seven. Some collectors would say, you know what? That even might even be an eight. Eight's pushing it. You could probably get away with a seven and a half. But again, I'm a very hard grader on my personal collection. Because I want to be honest with myself. Could I give this a seven and a half in my collection? Probably. Probably wouldn't give any arguments on it. But I don't want to have to keep thinking about the different things on this book. I give it a solid seven. I'm happy. It's a fair grade. Anybody could buy this book for a seven. Look at it and say, you know what? I'll buy that for a seven. I think that is a seven. So, again, when you're grading books, you have to be able to be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with the paper. Don't be afraid to use a flashlight. Okay? Don't be afraid to use a flashlight. Don't be able, don't be afraid to use the tools at hand. Don't let people sit there and say, oh, don't hold the book with your fingers. I shower. I wash my hands. It's clean. I can hold the book. You can hold the book like this. You can open the pages like this if you want. It doesn't do anything to the book. You see, the book didn't fall apart. It didn't break up. You know, don't handle these books gingerly like, you know, oh my god, this isn't, you know, Amazing Fantasy 15 or X-Men number one. This is Iron Man number 60. It's $9 in this condition. I think I can handle it properly. Uh, so, again, <clears throat> it was a quick video. Um, probably not the greatest video in the world, but I hope that some of the information that I gave you, you might be able to uh, use in your own grading endeavors. If you have any questions, feel free to, to shoot me a message, uh, make a comment. I usually answer my, my comments pretty quickly. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody who's watching my videos. I appreciate the input. I appreciate the positive feedback. So um, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. And as always, if you didn't, there's nothing I can do about that. But have a great night. Thanks.